From our studios in Atlanta, this is CBT News. The Kerrigan Advisors Market Update, brought to you by Kerrigan Advisors. All right, so Aaron, how did the Kerrigan Index do last month? So the Kerrigan Index was down slightly last month, down about 1.4%. And that was disappointing relative to the S&P 500, which was up 2.8% for the month. For the year, the Kerrigan Index is up about almost 3%. However, the S&P is up about 18%, so it is lagging the S&P this year and certainly last month. I will say, though, if you look historically, especially coming out of the recession, the Kerrigan Index far exceeded the S&P in terms of growth rates. So perhaps the S&P is catching up a bit with the Kerrigan Index. Yeah, no doubt about that. Okay, so Aaron, how active has the buy-sell market for auto dealerships been this year? It's been a very active year. At the beginning of the year, some were concerned that perhaps the buy-sell market might be slowing a bit. But in fact, it has remained at the same level, at the high levels we've seen in the last three years. We had 149 transactions completed in the first nine months, and we believe we'll be at about 200 for the full year, which puts us at yet another year, the fourth year of around 200 transactions. Now, a transaction represents multiple dealerships and multiple franchises in many cases. So this is a very robust marketplace. And what we're finding is more sellers are definitely coming to market, but also more buyers are entering the market. So we're at a really nice market equilibrium. And as we see it, this is likely to last for some time. It's a very good buy sell market, no doubt. Now that's great news to hear right there. Are the Publix acquisition today they are acquiring for sure. They've, in fact, increased their acquisition activity quite considerably. From last year, they were about $660 million of transactions through the full year. Just through the first nine months of this year, they're at over $800 million, and we expect them to be closer to a billion dollars in transactions by the end of this year. That's a real rebound from prior years, and it actually is approaching the 2014 peak level that we saw when Lithia acquired DCH. Oh, wow, gotcha. Okay, so then, Aaron, amongst the publics, who is the most acquisitive? Well, interestingly, it is Lithia. Lithia has been making the most acquisitions. They've added over a billion five, 1.5 billion in revenue through acquisitions. Their most recent acquisition is the largest public acquisition of the year, the uh, acquisition of the Downtown LA Auto Group, which Kerrigan Advisors was pleased to represent. It was the Shamus family that sold the one of the largest groups in the country, number 55 on Automotive News's top 150 list. One of the reasons that Lithia is so active is that they do trade at the highest multiple in terms of PE, so price to earnings multiple. And that gives them a lot more latitude in terms of their pricing. They can meet sellers' pricing expectations because most acquisitions are accretive to earnings for that company. Now, the second most acquisitive was Penske in the last, in this year. And not surprisingly, they are the second highest in terms of PE multiple. So this multiple matters a lot. And what we're finding is that Wall Street is starting to really reward the public companies that are growing through acquisitions. This gives Wall Street incentive to invest in these companies because they believe these companies are going to be able to continue to do accretive acquisitions and therefore grow their earnings. It's always interesting to hear you answer this next question. What is driving more sellers to market? Well, what we've found is that especially recently, and this was just covered in our third quarter Blue Sky Report is a real trend we are seeing in the marketplace that sellers are coming to market a bit concerned about the future of auto retail and their ability to navigate a changing auto retail model. With the backdrop of a more challenging retail environment today where you have expenses increasing, the SG&A expenses, a percentage of gross profit is definitely on the rise. At the same time, you have 
new vehicle gross margins declining. So dealers are making less money today than they did a few years ago. Albeit, they're still, they're still earning at a level that is very high on a historic basis, so the industry is very healthy today. However, it is more challenging. And with that backdrop, as they see headlines after headline about the potential disruption to the dealership business model with the changes that could come from autonomous vehicles or ride sharing or subscription models provided by the OEM, and, this, and you have dealers like Don Flo who's a, who announces that he's going to transform his business to a transportation management company. Well. A lot of dealers aren't interested in being a fleet management company. They love retailing cars. And so as they hear these headlines, knowing that we don't know when the model may change or how it will change, but if it is changing, a lot of dealers are saying, well, it might not make a lot of sense for me to pass this business down to my next generation because they might not be up for the task of navigating a whole new auto retail world. And so given that valuations are still so high for dealerships, because we do have a lot of buyers coming into the market, many are saying this is the time for us to consider a sale. And so that's what we are seeing. We're seeing more sellers coming to market to some degree driven by a concern about what might happen to the model, the auto retail model in the future. All right, so then how are transaction values today? Well, as I said, that is one of the reasons they are entering the marketplace because if they are a bit concerned about what might happen, they look at the values they can get today and say, goodness, I, it probably makes a lot of sense for me to sell my business today, especially larger dealership groups. Dealership groups can sell multiple stores to one buyer today, so very large transactions are getting done, and the valuations are very strong. Now, Goodwill and Blue Sky have come down a bit because earnings have declined a bit for dealers. They're down on average 6% from the peak in 2015. However, real estate values have appreciated quite nicely. So when dealers are going to market and selling their business, they are more often now also selling their real estate because the real estate really does make the transaction work for them. Real estate prices, commercial real estate prices are, are at all time highs right now in the marketplace. Okay, so then which franchises are in the greatest demand? Well, that's an interesting, that's an interesting shift in the market. Actually, his, over the last few years, we had maybe in 2015, you saw really buyers were interested in luxury and the top import franchises, the Japanese imports. What we found is that as we enter a, a higher uh, interest rate environment, interest rates are starting to come up. And with that, of course, a rising cost of capital and a rising need for return on investment, what we're seeing is buyers are becoming more interested in the domestic franchises. And the reason being is that they do provide a higher ROI. Those franchises trade at a lower multiple typically, and therefore, assuming the earnings stay the same, you're looking at a higher return on investment relative to the prices you would pay for a luxury, top luxury franchise. They're great to have, they're wonderful assets, but when you pay an eight multiple, you're gonna get a lower return on investment. You also have some franchises that trade at lower multiples but have more risk associated with the business model. So for instance, some of the Korean franchises, while they trade at a lower multiple, their earnings variability is much higher and so there's more risk to those deals. As such, we're seeing a real Dem demonstrable increase in buyer's demand for domestic franchises and now the domestic share of the buy-sell market is at 49%. It was just at 31% in 2015. So that's a real increase in market share. All right, Aaron Kerrigan, Kerrigan Advisors market update for November. We appreciate the content and the information. Aaron, looking forward to next month. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks so much, Joe, and happy holidays. You too. Thank you for watching the official news source of the retail automotive industry, CBT News.